this exact thing. Yeah. I don't think. Okay, we are going to do student life training. The most important thing to know about student life is that this is often a student's first encounter with the gospel. So we want for this to be a memorable experience, and we want for this to be a fun experience, and we want for this to be a safe experience. Memorable, fun, and safe. Do you hear me? Yes, Okay, so with everything we do, we're, we're about to do a walkthrough, and we're about to do about 20 minutes of some just examples of how to get started at youth group. So um, with everything we do, we want to make sure that those three things are kept in mind. Is what I'm doing to greet this student memorable, fun, and safe? If you are picking someone up and throwing them over a fence, probably not safe. Really fun, definitely memorable, probably not safe. If you, are, um, if you are making fun of them and what they're wearing, probably very memorable for a long time, definitely not fun and could be unsafe. So do you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Memorable, fun, and safe. So I want for everyone to stand up quietly. We're going to let Lily into the room. And we're going to go out this door, and we're going to go up the stairs. Oh, we're going to sound We are doing real youth group. Do I need to walk backward? Yes. <laughs> yes, Miss Tour Guide. Let's go, let's go! Woo! Just kidding. I was hoping y'all would run behind me. <laughs> I've never felt so popular before. Guys, we're playing follow the leader. You gotta do it exactly. shots here. Cool. New profile pic. It's warm. It is warm today. It feels good. Though. It does feel good. Let's go! Let's go! I'm right here! Well, they're being slow. Come on! Jason's looking at his sons. Nick and Kendall! Come on! Come on! We, you can do that later in about 30 minutes. It is warm. Yes. It's humid. That is right. It is it is a month in Florida. I'm not sure what month. Okay. Okay. This is so creepy. They're, they're so creepy. Okay. All right. So most about 90% of students enter through this gate to get to youth group. So this is where they will be greeted. This is their very first impression of Seven Rivers if this is their first time at youth group, okay? So even if they have gone to Seven Rivers for their whole life, we have a lot of kids moving up from fifth to sixth grade this summer. And so this is gonna be their very first experience with youth group. Some of them might be terrified. Some of them might be elated because they get to hang out with me, Mikey and Jason and you guys for the summer. I don't know, but this is their first experience. So we want to make this, this part right here, the most magical part of their night. So normally there will be a table that's right here. This table has a check-in folder on it for middle school. We don't necessarily do this for high school as much, but middle school, there's a table and there's a check-in. Those of you in ninth grade are aware that that check-in, because you all do it every week, is manned by our leadership and our leadership is checking in every student that comes through the door so we know exactly who's been there we know exactly um, how often they're coming we know everything that we need to know if they're a new student there's a card that they will fill out as soon as they get here that card has information like what's your mom's name what's your mom's phone number what's your mom's address those things are imperative that we get because we need to be able to contact Jean's mom when Jean breaks her leg when she falls down the stairs because Josh threw her over the fence like he wasn't supposed to do, right? Yeah. We have to have that information for emergencies. We do not know if we have that on file and we don't want to assume that we do. So your first job for a new student is to check them in at the invisible table that is right there. Nick. Right, yep. Right. Nick is Nick is the table. That's perfect, Nick. Perfect. <laughs> perfect. 
You're gonna check them in and you're gonna get their, their info card filled out. It's all, there are always tons of info cards inside the folder that's available that we will have, that I will have, one of you will have already set up. So that is step one. There's gonna be two people at this table at all times. There should not be 40 people at the table. There should be two to four people at the table checking people in. But there will also be a greeting committee. Oh my gosh, Kendall knew it, a greeting committee. So there are gonna be a couple people on either side of this fence. <laughs> and when I, okay, Kendall and Julia and Jean and Josh and, and Carson, why don't y'all be my greeting committee? Okay. Oh, yeah. Y'all gonna get on either side of the fence, yeah. Yeah, so I'm a new kid. I'm getting out of my mom's Cadillac right here. Ooh, nice cat. Yeah, all right, we close the door. Bye, Mom. See you later. Please don't leave me here. Oh, my gosh. I'm really scared. Come on. <laughs> You're making fun of me now. <laughs> Not safe or, or fun. Definitely memorable. What are you guys? What are you guys doing when I'm walking in? Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. Oh my gosh! You're excited to see me. This is so fun. Becca's gonna stop me, and Becca's gonna say, "Stop right there." Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> Becca's gonna stop me, and Becca's gonna say, "Hey, I'm Becca. I don't think I've met you before. What's your name?" Hey, I'm Becca. I don't think I've met you before. What's your name? Uh, my name is Carla. <laughs> Hi, Carla. We're so excited that you're here. Thank you so much. Okay. And then Becca's gonna say, "You look like a dwarf." Hey, I have this card. Do you mind filling it out? Filling it out. So I'm gonna fill out the card. Sometimes my mom is coming with me. If their mom walks up with them, do not make fun of them because they brought their mom. I my mom Be excited <laughs> that their mom is here. Introduce yourself to the parent. Even if you're in the ninth grade, introduce yourself to the parents. We want for the parents to trust us and to feel like their kids are safe with us too, okay? So it's really important to introduce ourselves. It's really important to get that information. Have them or their parent fill out the information, put the card, back in the thing okay so we've done that now we're gonna go over here and my greeting team yeah! that's great that's awesome they're excited that i'm here they're cheering for me and jean's gonna grab oh jean's gonna hug me that's perfect right there there's this really weird um weird thing called touch every student <laughs> Ew, right, so it's, it's slightly strange, but what it means is we want for every single student at Student Life to have an interaction with a leader or an adult. We want for every student to know that they were seen tonight at youth group, okay? This is really hard for me to do. It's really hard because I just want to go hang out with the people that I already know and love. That's what's comfortable. Dom, yes. But I also, it's really important for every single student to be seen and to feel like they they were known while they were here, okay? That is what creates the safe, trusting environment so that when they go and they hear the gospel for the first time, they're ready for it because they are not afraid of where they are or who they're with. So, Jean, Jean did a great job. Jean comes, she gives me a hug. She may, you know, if you're a guy, you may pat him on the back, give him a side hug, give him a high five, whatever. Do a little. Do a little something, something. Yeah, you can make a secret handshake. That's really cool. Oh, <laughs> yeah, we're cool. We're really cool. Jean is now, now that Jean's given me a hug and she's introduced herself, Jean's actually gonna walk with me as a brand new student. She's gonna maybe ask me what grade I'm in. Remember what we talked about yesterday? She's gonna ask me, hey, where do you go to school? What grade are you in? That gives me some key information here. If she says I go to Crystal River Middle School and I'm in the I'm I'm about to be in the ninth grade, well, I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna go find some kids who just left Crystal River Middle School and see if they know each other. Maybe ask on the way to make sure it's not like they're bully or something. But <laughs> you know, you're gonna you're gonna figure out where they go. if they go to Seven Rivers and they're in the ninth grade or the sixth grade, we're gonna find some Seven Rivers kids who are in the sixth or seventh grade. They probably already know each other, and we're gonna say, hey, you guys, Sarah's here. She wants somebody to hang out with. Can she play volleyball with you guys? Your name's Carla. My, oh, Carla. Carla's here. <laughs> Thank you, Kendall. Carla's here. She wants to play volleyball with you guys. Is that okay? They're gonna say yes because they're nice people. And so we're gonna go this way. Me too. Me and all of us. Everybody's coming this way. So we cheered. We've gotten excited. We've really built some height. That's hype. why we have the new. Hi, hi, hi. Youth group with me. They're excited about youth group. We're Woo! So much fun. 
All right, so, so G just introduced me to Julia. Me and Julia are hanging out. But uh, but Julia just Hello. wanted a way to go hang out with her friends, and I'm still here by my. Uh, Jean went back up to start greeting again. I'm oh, just he. Who are you? Oh, I've never seen you that's before. That's perfect. That's perfect. This is this is my name. Kendall. Kendall. Yeah, I'm Carla. So nice, nice to meet, meet you. you. How are yeah, you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Thanks. What grade are you in? Oh my gosh, I'm a senior in college. Just wanted to come to youth group tonight. <laughs> so good. Okay. Okay. So if you see a student standing by themselves, whether they are new or whether they've been coming for 10 years, your job, you are obligated as a leader and as a staff person, as a staff, I'm talking to myself as much as I'm talking to you. You are obligated to go up to them, introduce yourself and invite them into whatever you're doing. Talk to them about what book they're reading. Talk to them about what music they've got on in their AirPods that they refuse to take out. Uh, Talk to them about whatever. But impose yourself on that person in a good way, in a safe way. So that they feel like they were seen and loved and that they can trust us. Okay? So we want to make sure that every single student, nobody leaves feeling that, like they were alone at Seven Rivers that night. Okay? So we, and some of you guys have seen me do this before. I'm more than happy to be like, hey, there's a kid over there by themselves. I'm gonna need you to come and stop playing with your friends and go hang out with them. Hopefully I do it in a nice way. Sometimes I don't, it's fine. <laughs> I'm working on it guys, I'm working on it. There's always repentance. Um, gospel waltz in, through that. But, so we want to make sure that everyone feels like they have a safe place and a safe person. So even if you're not with them all night, Spend some time with them, get to know them, um, help them know that they are loved and accepted and that we want them at youth group, okay? So for the first however long, 20 minutes or so, we are playing outside. We play and play and play. We lock the door so they cannot get inside. It's a really fun game we like to play called You're Not Allowed to Come Inside. Um, and so they're playing volleyball, they're playing basketball. Interns, this is a really great time for you to connect with students, for you to find people to do contact work with, for you to um, ask about weeks with, do um, be a little bit more intentional during this time. We've got 20 or so minutes where kids are, and some kids get here like an hour early. So you've really got like an hour and 20 minutes to hang out, to play, to be intentional, to ask how their week was, to say, hey, let's get lunch tomorrow and put that on your schedule, right? Yeah, my schedule. You're welcome. <laughs> for that tip free tip that's a freebie right Woo! there uh, you're welcome Jason so we play and we play and we play and then we go inside so as leadership you get called in at the there's a five minute countdown and you'll know the music about week one yeah. <laughs> because it is it creates the like the Pavlov thing right is that what it is <laughs> we're the slobber with the bell so we're gonna go this way. Five minutes before a countdown begins and Mikey or I or Jason will come out and we will say, leadership, come this way. Boy, stop fighting. Come on. Goodness gracious. Sarah, that's not nice. So we, as leadership, <laughs> that happens. Leadership, why don't, why don't my, um, my former eighth grade leaders line up and show us exactly what's about to happen? Woo! Eighth grade leaders, let's go, let's go! dirty in here. It's a messy room. All right. So we're going to come in here. We'll, we'll, we'll do some review of that in a set. So, so when we do the tunnel, there is a tunnel. Guys, listen up. There is a tunnel every single week at youth group. If there is a week that doesn't have a tunnel, it wasn't really youth group. Do you hear me? There has to be a tunnel. Catalina agrees. That was an emphatic Jesus. face. There is always a tunnel. With the tunnel, there can be costumes, there can be wigs, there can be overalls, there should always be clothes, there can be noodles, <laughs> there can be water guns, there can be silly string, there can be whatever you want that you can find that's available 
in this building. Chairs. Tights. There should not be chairs thrown at anyone. Tights. Remember, remember what is every encounter. We want for everything that we do to be fun, safe, and memorable. Thank you, ladies. So, chairs probably not safe. I mean, we could have A lot of things are memorable. (laughs) Not safe. Not fun for the person getting hit in the head with a chair leg. So, not funny. but not funny either. Yeah. So there are um, there are costumes and things in the offices and in this storage room over here, and we'll get to that in a little while. Um, but and there are noodles. There's a big noodle thing right over here. Tons of noodles. Feel free to attack with noodles in a safe, memorable, and fun way. You got it. Okay. So that's that. So we've got 50, 60, 7,000 kids in this room. Uh, it's hot, it's sweaty, it smells like a sixth grade boy. I mean, it's really, it's, it's a good time. So we're in this room, we have begun youth group. There's a countdown on, the countdown goes 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. <laughs> single week week three should not be any less exciting than week one and week 10 should not be any less exciting than week three do you understand every week should be equally exciting because every week is a new week for somebody we very rarely have a week where there's not a new student here so every week needs to be equally exciting so we're counting down we're getting excited we are setting the stage for what's about to happen we are setting the stage for the best night of your life. Do you hear me? I mean, because we all know youth group's the best night of our lives, right? Uh, Yes. Totally. The best night. It's going to be especially important for us that are in this room because we're all in high school now. High school can be a little bit too cool for school sometimes. So for us to set the example and for us to say, no, we're going to have fun whether you want us to be lame and sit in the back or not is is what we're going to do. We're going to set the example. We're going to have fun. We're not going to be too cool. So... Because let's be real, my too cool is still like pretty low. Um, so we're going to run in. We're going to have people who are dedicated to specific. Guys, I need you to please pay attention. Put everything down. Thank you. Everything we do is important. Everything we do, want, we want to be exciting. So as soon as we're in, that countdown happens. As we're counting 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Some of you already have assigned jobs. You don't actually yet, but you will have assigned jobs. So maybe Catalina's going to do announcements every single week. Maybe not. I don't know. But maybe she's going to, she said, I don't know. (laughs) Maybe she's going to, so while we're counting down, Catalina's running on the stage like Jason did, and she's getting crazy. She's, she's getting hype. She's getting, she's getting excited. And as soon as those lights turn up, Catalina's got a microphone in her mouth and she's ready to welcome everyone to Student Life. Welcome to Student Life. We're so excited you're here. So excited you're here. Yeah. So Catalina's gonna she's gonna she's gonna welcome them to Student Life. She's gonna introduce herself and she's gonna tell them that here we believe all students are lovable, lovable through, the, exactly. through the gospel. Exactly. Lovable through the gospel, lovable through a relationship with Jesus. If you have not figured out, we are going to pound this in people's heads. We already do. So we want for people to know that they are so she those are the three things she's gonna say, and then she's gonna go through her list of announcements that were pre-planned. Deal? So we're probably not going to make up random announcements, but you can have fun with announcements. So maybe Catalina has a joke or she has, she remembers this really funny memory from camp last year and she's ready to share it in the announcement. So maybe she'll do that. She'll make them personable. She'll make them fun. But in general, she's going to do announcements. She's going to keep it. Oh, and then Catalina's going <laughs> to say her goodbyes. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye, Catalina. Bye. So we are going to, um, so that's, that's how that's going to work. Somebody's going to make announcements, and then they're going to introduce the next person. The next, the next thing we do is most likely going to be a game of some sort. So whoever's in charge of games, Josh is going to be in charge of games today. So Josh is going to be called up by Catalina, and Josh is going to jump onto the stage in a very athletic manner. He's got that mic. He's got that smile. He's, he's got that flower. Go. He's, Thank you, he's Catalina. Sure. Yeah, that's it right there. Thank you very much. And he's going to get, he, if you are in charge of games, we want people to play the games, and we want them to think that this is exciting and that they're going to feel left out if they didn't. <laughs> so, 
So you're gonna be excited. You're gonna Woo, play. Today we're gonna play freeze tag. Oh my gosh, I Whoa, love freeze tag. So my favorite fun. game. You, as, as people in the audience, are going to be excited about everything that Josh yeah! says. Yeah! That's it, right there. You're going to be excited. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Jason, how much caffeine did you have today? So, so we as the audience members are as important, if not more important, than the person on the stage. I'm setting the stage to make sure that everyone is about to have the best time. We want them to have fun playing these games. We don't want for them to feel embarrassed. We don't want for them to be afraid. The other thing that, that is different that I don't think we've done super well in the past is, I need 100% attention, is make, sometimes we get a little, people get anxious because these are partner games and they're like, oh, I don't have any friends here. So the most important thing that we can do during a game is find a partner that we do not know. So Jacob and Zach are not going to be partners for every game, even though they might win every game if they're partners. <laughs> Zach's going to Zach's gonna see this kid, Bartholomew, over in the corner sitting by himself, and Zach's going to walk over to Bartholomew, and he's going to say, hey, man, can I be your partner? Duh! What's up? What's your yeah, name? Yeah, I'm Carla. Nice to meet oh, you again. Yeah. You don't, you don't remember no. me? It's okay. It's fine. It's fine. Next time. So... We're going we're gonna to find people that we don't know to be partners with if there's someone that needs a partner. If there's nobody that needs a partner, okay, be partners with your friends. But wait to be partnered with your friends until, the, until you know everybody else has a partner. Understood? Okay. As leaders, we are servants, right? We ca Jesus came to serve rather than to be served. We want to do the same thing. We want to serve at youth group rather than be served. And one of the ways that we can do that is to partner with people who may not have a partner, who we may not even know, who may make us lose immediately. <laughs> and that can also be really fun because then you get to make fun of the people who are winning. But that's and not fun for that's people. not fun for the other people, so, so we're still gonna do that. But anyway, <laughs> all right, so we're gonna play a game. We're gonna have a ton of fun. Whoa. We're gonna play a few rounds of it. There's usually a time limit, so if you're in charge of games, you wanna watch that time limit. If we go over a couple minutes, okay. If we still have a few minutes to kill, let's play another round or let's, let's do the other game on the list. So does that make sense? Games make sense? Yeah. All right, if there is a person in the corner by themselves named Bartholomew, what are you going to do? Leave him. That's it. Jacob is going to go and he's going to be their Give partner. Give him a new name. We're going to, we, we might rename them. We might call him Bart. Greg. Hey, man, can I call you Bart? That's a good way to make some memories right there. <laughs> okay, so games are done. We've had a ton of fun with games usually i don't know how it's going to work but sometimes there's a story or there's worship or both so we're going to move from the game into a time of worship the easiest way to calm the room down is to do what pray pray is to pray <laughs> so whether you're an intern or a leader or jason or sarah or mikey or someone completely different than anyone in this room right now you are going to come onto the stage. I know I don't know Sarah. She's old Carla. news. Carla's new news. Oh. Um, you're gonna go up and you're gonna. All right, guys, we're gonna move into a time of worship. Will you pray with me? That calms the room down. Put the noodles down. Y'all are driving me crazy. Y'all are not allowed to have fun or make memories today. <laughs> we're gonna move into a time of prayer. So you pray. Maybe there are specific things we're praying for. I don't know. Usually that is decided ahead of time. Pray for the night, and then you're going to introduce Jason and the worship team. So, all right, Jason and the worship team are going to come up. They're going to lead us in a time of worship. So they're going to lead us in worship. What are we doing during worship? Are we snapping our friends? Always. No. 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 We are not snapping our friends in the middle of worship or the middle of training. We are. <laughs> we're worshiping. So we're not distracted by other people. We're not, we're not, you guys are making great examples of what not to do in youth group right now. Well, is that what we're supposed to do? You guys are not distracting. You're not talking to each other. You're not giggling with each other. You're not slapping each other. You're not stealing each other's hats. You're worshiping because it's a time of worship. It's a time of reverence. It's a time to be serious. It's a time to set the mood for the rest of the room. And as leadership, that's what we're here to do, right? We're here to make sure that everyone else knows what they're here to do too. So we want to worship, and we want to help them worship. We don't want to be distractions from people who are trying to worship, right? So that's what we're doing. Then, after worship, what happens? If you've ever been to youth group, you know. 
Dodgeball. No, after we're at, yes, Jacob Briggs has been to youth group and Jacob knows that the next thing is a sermon. If you're telling your story, Jason will always tell you when you're gonna tell your story. So Jason will say, I want you to tell your story between the first and the second song, or I want you to tell your story right before Mikey comes up to talk. So you'll know when you're telling your story, There's we typically do stories, yes, we usually keep those stories to about five minutes. Stories are really important. They help people understand that they are not the only ones experiencing things, whether it's trauma or hurt or something scary or um, something exciting or whatever it may be. Your story is your own and we want you to tell it and we want you to tell it um, honestly and vulnerably because it's an, a great way for people to understand that they are not alone in life. So somebody's gonna tell their story in worship and then whoever is teaching is gonna come up and they're gonna teach. During that teaching time, it's a great opportunity again to go find someone who's sitting alone and sit with them, to have your Bible and your notebook out and taking notes, to not be not be texting, not be snapping, not be <laughs> Kendall's like ready to snap again. Um, it is a great opportunity to um, to just sit with somebody. It's really I. It's really scary to sit in alone in a room with 50 or 60 people that you don't know or don't know well and be by yourself. It's really hard to listen to teaching when you are worried about what's going on around you and who these people are and do they think I'm weird because I'm sitting by myself and do they think that I'm weird because I don't have any friends here and oh my gosh, I just had to play that game by myself because nobody would volunteer to, to be my partner. It's really, really hard. I've been there, I don't like it. I don't want a single student to experience that. So, during teaching, again, a great time to go find somebody who's sitting by themselves and sit with them. Go find somebody that you have been mentoring and like it's, it's great for Kendall to go find a sixth grade girl and go like, hey, do you wanna sit with us? Or, hey, can I sit with you? Invite them to sit with your friends. You go sit with them. Find somebody younger than you. That's really fun. Um, and then, so there's teaching and then at the end of teaching, sometimes we have another song, depending on how much time we have, sometimes we don't. <laughs> so we just kinda go with the flow, right? And then at the end, for middle school, we play dodgeball. High school, we play less dodgeball, and we move to the cereal. that place, and we have cereal. So we're going to move out to do cereal. Yes. What kind of cereal? Whatever's available. <laughs> There's multiple kinds of cereals. Cereal fences. Cereal killing. <laughs> cereal. So... This is the best part of the night, other than the obvious gospel encounter totally. that students have had. So we keep cereal under here, and every Wednesday night after high school, we take cereal out of this cabinet, and we stack it, and there are leaders behind the counter serving the students. So they are not serving themselves because it makes a mess. We are serving them, and it still makes a mess. It's great. We love messes around here. Um, so there are bowls, which are not available currently because we are out. There's cereal down here, and there is milk in the fridge. So you're going to take it all out. You're going to pour some bowls of cereal. You're going to ask them what they want. By the end of the summer, you're going to know what they want because they always get the same thing, and it's really fun. Um, so you're going to pour cereal. You're going to pour milk. You're going to serve them. They're going to start throwing it at each other's mouths. We'll get to that cleanup in a minute. Uh, <laughs> but that's how that's going to go. We love cereal time. Guys, if I'm behind the counter serving cereal, that's the best because it means that y'all are at tables sitting with each other eating cereal together. That's the best. You get to follow up on the teaching from the night. Most of the time, there's someone crying. <laughs> We can go find them, and we can talk to them about what's going on. We can work through that together. There's always somebody that wants to talk after. I've never been to youth group where there wasn't somebody who wanted to talk about something after the teaching. So when we're out here, we're sitting around tables, we're playing games with each other. It's cool to play games. It's cool to talk. It's cool to go outside and play basketball. It's cool to do whatever you want. But this is a perfect opportunity for you guys to sit around the table with students and eat and talk. And pray with each other, too. If you, if you have things that you want to pray about with each other, then pray. Like, let's do it. So that's what happens after high school. After middle school, we play dodgeball in here. Um, and, but it's that there's a, an overlap. So that's one really important thing for those of you who are not aware. 
most of students are, but we overlap by 30 minutes middle school and high school. So middle school ends at 7.30, high school begins at seven o'clock. So that 30 minutes, we're in teaching, high school is out here hanging out. So as interns, maybe, I don't really know. As leaders, maybe some of us are out here, the delegated people are out here hanging out while other delegated people are in here doing crowd control. We will figure that out on a weekly basis. But that's what, that there is an overlap there. That's, it kind of gets complicated, but we've been doing it for a year and it's gone really well. So um, anyway, so that's that. Then students begin to leave and we all cry. We're really sad. We're really, really sad. But we have one more way that we can serve. And what is that? Clean up. We can clean up, Trash. yes. So we have a really incredible cleaning crew at Seven Rivers. We have some awesome maintenance guys that work here, some awesome maintenance women that work here. But when they come in and there are 450 bags of fruity dino bites sprinkled along the floor because we were trying to get it in each other's mouths from across the room, it's a little bit of a mess. And the last thing we wanna do is leave a massive mess for them because they'll clean it up because they have, are incredible people. But we wanna serve them and not necessarily make them do that every week. So y'all are gonna follow me. I'm gonna show you exactly how to clean up. I don't actually have keys though. Jason, do you have keys? Jason has everything. We're gonna pause here while Jason hands in his keys. All right, so y'all are gonna come this way. We're gonna find, if you were on the cleanup crew, you're gonna find a key. You need an SMB key. And this SMB key opens this closet. You'll notice that this is the cleaning closet because it says cleaning guidelines on the closet door. So if you ask me where the cleaning closet is, I will say, look for the cleaning guidelines poster on the cleaning closet door, okay? So this is the cleaning closet. It has everything we need. And you're gonna open it with the key for the SMB that you borrowed from one of us. And you're gonna get this handy dandy vacuum cleaner. This is called a vacuum cleaner, guys. I don't know if you've ever vacuumed Whoa. before. His name is Max. His name is Max. And we are, you roll it out and you unroll the cord. This is not very well done, guys. This Mr. is not Chikowski. how we're gonna redo this. Is this is an example of how not to. How not to do it. You're gonna roll this out and you're gonna, we're gonna vacuum the theater and we're gonna vacuum out here. Now you do not have to vacuum every square inch of the entire SMB. Guys, are you listening? Cause there's a lot of talking. This is the most important part other than all the other parts that were the most important as well. <laughs> You're gonna vacuum. So if there is cereal on the floor, we're gonna spot clean the cereal. We're gonna go in the theater and we're also gonna vacuum in there. There's another vacuum cleaner in that big closet out there, but if, if only one person's vacuuming, you can use the same one. So we're gonna vacuum the theater and we're gonna vacuum out here. Off in the theater has candy wrappers and all kinds of stuff all over it. We're gonna clean all that up. We're gonna throw everything away. We usually try to ask students to clean up some of that as well. Um, but if for some reason they don't or we don't get a chance to ask them to, then it's our responsibility. So. As leaders, as servants, we are going to clean up after them, whether we like it or not. Most of the time I have a bad attitude about it, so y'all can call me out on that. There's also spray if like something gets really gross. This, we rarely use spray, but if something gets really gross, there's spray, there are towels in here so you can wipe down counters if milk gets spilled somewhere. We can, um, we can wipe down with the towels and the spray. And then everything needs to go back into this closet. So there's a bucket and it has dirty towels in it. Throw your dirty towel in the dirty towel bucket. Do not throw your dirty towel on the floor. Do not throw your dirty towel on a random shelf. Do not throw it in the sink. Throw it in the dirty towel bucket. That seems obvious, but it's probably not. So I say it. Put the vacuum cleaner back on the cart so that it is where it belongs so that they can find it. Um, and if there's anything outside of that that you need, um, ask us. The only other thing that we do with cleaning is we try to combine all the trash cans. So we take all the trash bags out of all the trash cans and put them all in one trash can. So it just helps the maintenance guys be able to, um, we don't need to re-put a trash bag in there, they'll do that for us, but it just helps them um, have less to do when they come in to actually like do a, a fuller, deeper clean of the place. So does that make sense? Does anybody have questions about cleaning? Will we ever need to use Febreze? No. Well, we always need Febreze, but no, um, it always yeah. smells because there are sixth grade boys here. <laughs> um, okay, so 
When, um, when students leave, if someone is leaving, you want to make sure that you tell them goodbye, right? If you want to make sure that, again, that they knew that they were seen while they were here. We want to make sure that they were not invisible while they were at youth group. So we're going to tell them goodbye. We're going to make sure that they get to their car safely. Most of the time, middle school parents come and get them, and most of the time, high school students are driving. So um, there's, you know, there's very little to do there. But we do want to make sure that... Um, that we tell people by as we see them go. Um, and I think that might be everything that I need to say. Yes, Kendall, you seem to have something to say. What are these rooms? Oh, these are small group <laughs> rooms. Don't are, but... We don't really use these for youth groups, so these don't have any, a ton of bearing. Here is something that you need to know. There is zero, zero reason for anyone to be in the classroom on Wednesday nights. <laughs> There's zero reason for anyone to be in these offices unless you're on leadership and you're grabbing something out of them. So if you're in these offices, especially the office offices, like mine and Mikey's offices with the doors closed, that is not acceptable, no matter who you're with. If you need a private space to talk, go outside to a corner, go to a table that's in a corner, go literally anywhere except for in a closed room by yourself. It just doesn't, no matter what you're doing, it just doesn't look good. Um, if you see someone that is, especially interns, if you see, or leaders, if you, adult leaders, if you see a student who is in, a class, in the classroom at all, ask them to leave, make sure that, that classroom stays locked. We usually have it locked. If they're in one of these offices with the doors closed, check in on them, have them come out of the office, ask them if everything's okay. If it's a boy and a girl, that's completely unacceptable. Um, and we want to avoid any, any kind of situation that's not going to be fun, safe, or memorable. Um, or any, any situation that's going to be memorable or um, for a, a bad reason. So that's unacceptable. These rooms, this has a, this has a video game system in it. Um, guys, until about 30 minutes before youth group, some of the boys like to play. That's fine. About 30 minutes before youth group starts, these rooms need to be off limits. We all need to be outside playing with each other. If we're in here isolated, then we're not welcoming people and we're not, um, we're not inviting people in to our groups. And so this room probably is off limits until about 30 minutes before youth group starts. Or 30, at 30 minutes before youth group starts. Um, and then... If you, um, if you do need to have a small group or whatever, if, if Lily wants to have a conversation with three or four girls, you, you, or, or Josh or Tucker, whoever, you can go into those rooms um, and have conversations in there, play games in there, whatever you want to do um, in the afternoons when you are playing with kids. Um, but on youth group nights, we stay outside or we stay in this big room as one big group. We, don't, we try not to section off because it leaves people out. Um, okay, any questions? No. No questions? Does that sound, sound doable? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. How, what are we going to do to make sure that everyone has a great night? What are the three things? Memorable, fun, safe. Memorable, fun, and safe. That's exactly right. Say? Okay. All right. That's it. That's all I've got for student life training. Y'all are, we're done. <laughs>